So you know cervical cancer is one of the most important female cancers in the world. It's number four uh, with respect to the mortality rates. And uh, the important point that it's almost 100% result cancer. So we almost know the all mechanisms involved in developing the cervical carcinoma. And uh, we, have, uh, we know that almost 100% of this cancer is related to HPV. And in this respect, we have two prevention strategies, which is first the vaccination and then the screening, of course. If all the governments can come together and give hand in hand, it is really like a polio disease, polio infectious disease. It's a cancer that we can totally eradicate through vaccination and screening. And uh, thanks to the WHO, who has started a, a, a declaration and uh, called all countries to fight against uh, cervical carcinoma. And hopefully uh, there will be a resolution paper which will be published by, uh, by 2020 in the United Nations Assembly. And, and in, in the next two or three decades, I think there will be zero mortality related to cervical cancer if all countries can come together. And uh, especially the, the, the most important development has occurred in cervical cancer screening. We already know that we have a pap smear, which is in use for more than 50 years, which is really a successful tool in many developed European countries. We know that it works and it can decrease the cervical cancer mortality uh, at least 70 to 80% if you, if you have a high coverage of screening. However, uh, if you look to the realities, even if you have such a good screening tool, uh, the reality is that only 12 European countries have such a successful pap smear histology program. You know, even in the most developed countries, uh, in, in majority of the world, despite that this test has been used in more than 50 years in the world, a great majority of the world could not have a successful screening program. And even in these developed countries, where they have a good pap smear program, like UK, Germany, they also want to make a change in the screening program from pap smear to other ways. So uh, uh, why? What is the problem with the pap smear? If you look, the biggest problem uh, for the many parts of the world, like, uh, like my country, Turkey, and like Middle East countries, in many Asian countries, is the organizational problem. So pap smear is uh, really a quality complex uh, system. You need a dedicated pathologists, and you need a very very well controlled quality system and you cannot become successful in such prog programs because even if you have a dedicated pathologist they don't they don't do it or they limit the number of the pap smears that they can evaluate per week or once you start the quality assurance in the many of the uh, pathology experts regret to be involved in in, in continuous evaluation of their qualities additionally uh, in the developed countries where you have a very good pap smear program. Uh, they, why they want to change their system? Because the pap smear has also some interesting scientific problems. For example, it's, it has low sensitivity, just 60 percent. So you go to a village and you can just detect 60 of out of 100 cancer cases. On the other hand, it has also a poor negative predictive value. So even if your pap smear is negative, you cannot reassure the lady for five or 10 years. So they have to come at least with three years intervals. And the ladies are, you know, are uh, bored coming to frequent gynecological examinations. And its reproducibility is low. So your pap smear may be normal in one center and then abnormal in another and then uh, cancer in another. So really, you're, really, your result depends on the experience of the center who's evaluating the pap smear. And what happened in the science that uh, we have now new HPV DNA tests coming up for as a screening test. So this is a DNA test, so this is objective. So you don't have inter and intra observer variability. It's the same result in almost everywhere with 90% accuracy. It's very sensitive. Uh, compared to 60% of pap smear, you have at least 95% sensitivity. And the false negative rate is four times less what does it mean? That you can really reassure the lady to come at least every once in a five year. And in vaccinated ladies, it can be once in, in each 10 years. So the ladies become more happy. Another advantage that, like our countries, you don't need too many manpower. You don't need too many pathologists. You don't need 
too complicated quality assurance. And it can be automated, centralized. That's what I did in Turkey. Uh, from the pap smear, we have converted to the HPV DNA tests. And the cancer screening rate has increased in my country 10 times compared to the pap smear times. And thanks to the WHO that probably in the future, in many, uh, in many of the world, HPV DNA will be the feature. And actually, this screening test is not new. We have uh, more than 200,000 ladies randomized in the last 10 years, and we have the follow-up data of them for at least eight years. So these scientific evidences is not just one year or two years. Two year. It's an accumulation of a huge scientific evidence. And now the feature is also changing uh, because we know that HPV tests even can be done by self-testing technologies. Even you can check HPV in the feature with the urine. What does it mean that the lady will screen herself in her home with a simple test that you can use in her vagina or with a simple urine test, like the pregnancy test? So especially in the developing world where their infrastructure or the manpower in pathology is deficient, this will be the feature to eliminate the cervical carcinoma. And that is the reason almost all societies, including the United States, European ones, WHO, and even ASCO, everybody agrees on the fact that uh, pap smear is going down and HPV DNA alone can be used for primary cervical cancer screening. Well, this is uh, a very complex question. It has many different stakeholders, and all these stakeholders should frequently come together. The main problem in, in HPV vaccination is that it's an adolescent age vaccination group, and in anyhow it is related to cancer, in anyhow it's related to sexual behaviors. So, so uh, it's a sexual transmitted disease. So in this age group, adolescent age group, it's always open in a country that you can suddenly have a crisis of some side effects of, on, on, of unproven evidence. We very well know that. This is one of the most uh, closely follow-up vaccination and neither the side effects nor the effectiveness scientifically has any question. So it is uh, safely than uh, vaccination. But uh, what I see that, that we have a communication problem. So these HPV experts of the country, including the media, including the pediatricians, gynecologists, and the uh, public NGOs, should regularly come together. But the, what, what we do, we just come together after a crisis, and this crisis become a fight against the vaccination advocates versus uh, uh, anti-vaccination lobbies. But if you get the control with this group of people, and inform the uh, public regularly, periodically, that we are following, and this is the amount of the side effects, this is the amount of the effectiveness, but this is continuous, not on the crisis. Continuously, I think it will be, it will be a very, very nice methodology to use. On the other hand, plus, uh, we should also uh, have special plans on adolescent trainings. It's, it's a difficult age, the most difficult age interval of our lives. We are changing from child uh, ages to, uh, to adult ages. And this age group needs a spe special uh, communication. And I think social media in this age group is very important. If you look in many vaccination crises, start at the social media. So you have to also check the right information, uh, inform the people from the social media regularly. Uh, and, and in this way, uh, plus a third methodology, I would add that you should also uh, put some real uh, examples. Uh, the people with cervical carcinoma, when you ask them that, do you know there is a vaccination that you can prevent it? And they are all shocked because they never heard about it. So we should use these real examples and show that these are the countries and these are the data after the vaccination reduced uh, papilloma virus, reduced warts, reduced cancer. And these are the countries without any vaccination program, and these are the ladies who are almost dying due to the cervical carcinoma. I think these real life ex experiences can also motivate the ladies uh, to be uh, vaccinated.